Good evening. Welcome to Moscow Mas. I am your host, Raul Mas. Thank you for being with us this evening. We've got a, another terrific guest on the program tonight, a gentleman by the name of Edward Crawford. I've known Ed for quite some period of time, uh, going back, I think, at least to 2008, 2009 time frame. A uh, fantastic young man now living in Dallas, Texas. So we're going to be joining him remotely uh, via Zoom call. Uh, but I think you'll enjoy uh, uh, listening to uh, Ed Crawford speak and hearing his life story and uh, what he's been doing uh, these last sort of 12 years. All very interesting uh, stuff. Uh, just a great individual. Ed, thank you for being on the program with us. How are things in Dallas? Thank you so much, Raul. Things are things are good in Dallas. It's hot, um, but we uh, we're we're doing wonderful. Um, trying to stay six feet apart uh, and 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 run a business during COVID. Um, but uh, but really enjoy have uh, really enjoyed living here so far. How long have you been there now? How how long has it been since you left Miami? I've been there, I've been here four years. Four wow, years. Um, uh, just about this September, right? So uh, about four years in Dallas. Time flies. The last time we spoke, I mean, obviously you're 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 loving it out there. I mean, in terms of the city and the people. We really enjoy it. We love Miami. We miss Miami, but we really enjoy um, uh, Dallas. We have my wife's family has uh, family in Fort Worth, and then I have family in Louisiana. So we get back to Louisiana a lot. So good it's for you, man. It's, uh, it's going to be close to the roots. Good for you. So I was actually trying to remember it. I mean, I think we met probably around the same time you came down here to Miami to work for, for Goldman Sachs. That was sort of the right. 2008 time frame, if I remember correctly. Uh, mm -hmm. And ver very early on in your career at Goldman Sachs, you made the decision to uh, uh, join the Navy Reserve. But before we go there, take us back a little bit prior to that. I mean, tell us a little about, you know, where you grew up and and uh, your, 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 you know, your, your formative years, if you will, going sure. to college, going to graduate school at Tulane. Give us a little bit of the, the bio, if you will. Sure, sure. So, so started off um, at a tech, from Shreveport, Louisiana, originally fourth generation Shreveport guy. Right. Um, right. Went to TCU for college and then wanted to be of service to the country in one way or another. Um, I ended up joining the Peace Corps. And so I spent uh, about close to two and a half years in the Peace Corps in Dominican Republic in a small town called Los Blancos de Barona in, in Provincia de Barona. Um, and uh, I started a coffee business there. It was um, on the Haitian side of the island, the uh, west side. Uh, started a small coffee business and grew it with some coffee farmers to help them have more soil in the mountains, help uh, generate more profit for their families. Um, cut out the intermediary, get an organic certification and then a microloan facility um, so they could get better lending rates. Um, and so that was my first real foray into both entrepreneurship and business. Um, and a, uh, a bit of an unusual yeah. path that I mean, you know, you, you, here yeah. you go to Tulane, you get a couple of graduate degrees. And then instead of going off to Wall Street right away or big business, you decide to go to the Peace Corps. I mean, obviously, your, your call to service started at a very young age. Where does that come from? Who, who generated it, it, it that? It comes uh, from family and faith, right? My, my grandfather on my dad's side was a, a Navy officer and a doctor. My grandfather on my mother's side uh, escaped from Austria as a, as a Jewish immigrant. Mm -hmm. Most of his family was killed in, the, um, in uh, Crystal Night and in the camps. And so he tried to apply to the U.S. military twice as an Austrian. They rejected him, and he made it over to this country did join the army, went through all of medical school in English, and ended up serving as the head anesthesiologist in the VA hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, um, where he served many of the same veterans that had fought to liberate his people. And so growing up with my grandfather who spoke, you know, uh, his English was very Arnold Schwarzenegger-esque, very uh, Austrian. I didn't always understand what he was saying, uh, but I understood his love for this country he converted it to Christianity uh, late in his life and forgave Hitler. And so the ability to forgive and the faith to be able to have hope and be a kind person after all he had been through informs a lot of my faith. Sure. Um, and my grandmother was a sweet woman who, who uh, was also very, very faithful. Um, and then uh, the, the service to the country, seeing what America offered him, um, which is the same immigrant story we see across many different demographics, uh, Cuban being one of them, that this country offers such a, a array of hope to escape something, but also also to build an incredible life. And so wanting to give back and serve others that are less fortunate, uh, kind of on a faith side, um, but also give back to this country and serve this country that has given so much to, you know, my, uh, my grandparents, my parents, for me and, and my, my children as well. So TCU, Tulane, and then the Peace Corps for how many years, uh, Ed? 
Uh, two and a half years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and that's kind of where you get into the, into the business world, correct? Right. Um, ended up, ended up working for, ended up joining the U S military as a reserve officer and then working at, at Goldman Sachs in the, uh, Miami office. Terrific. Uh, of Goldman. And then something happened in 2011 that, that really changed your mind. And that was the, uh, the shoot down of a Chinook helicopter known by the call sign of, uh, extradition, uh, sorry, extortion 17, uh, mm -hmm. tell our audience, uh, what happened, uh, on extortion 17. Yeah, so, so um, Extortion 17, uh, there was a flight in a Chinook a CH-47 helicopter flying over Wardock province, and that, that, um, that helicopter, a bird, is, was shot down. Right. Um, and I had two uh, friends that I had kind of grown up with, and uh, had, lost, had talked to one of them and lost touch with the other. Uh, one's name was Jonas Kelsaw, who was leading that mission, and the other was um, uh, Rob Reeves, Chief Petty Officer Rob Reeves, who, who was um, on the mission. So I I heard that, that Rob had been killed and, um, you know, tried to find out what was happening and then also found out that, uh, that Jonas had been killed. Um, so I, uh, I flew to the memorial service in Shreveport, Louisiana, and just so happened to run into Rob's fiance, who I did not know, and sat next to her on the flight to Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, there were hundreds of Patriot Guard riders out um, kind of protecting the memorial service so that it would be honored. And, um, and I watched... Um, uh, a lot of guys walk across the stage and talk about their seventh and eighth deployment. Um, and I told my wife that day, something kind of hit me. I was living in a, on an Island on Miami beach working for Goldman Sachs. And I thought I could do more, um, to support. And so, uh, so I told my wife, I said, I hope you understand. I need to serve and, and bless her heart. She, she allowed me to do that. Um, and I ended up deploying, um, had a son June 6, 2012, um, at D-Day 2012, and had a one-and-a-half-year-old daughter uh, named Caroline, yep, sure and uh, left six or seven days later. Um, so um, my, my wife's an incredible human being for uh, allowing me to do that and taking care of the kids during that time. But. Ter terrific. And uh, you went to a uh, sort of a remote spot uh, in, in uh, Afghanistan. I mean, you were not based in uh, Kabul. I mean, you... Uh, you signed up to deploy with uh, SEAL Team 4, as I understand, uh, and you were out right. in Uruzgan province. Is that correct? Right. Uruzgan started out with uh, Team 2, and I'm an intel officer, not a SEAL, um, but, uh, but served as their support. Uh, incredible human beings, all of them. Um, and so started off with SEAL Team 2, and then SEAL Team 4 came in, and I was the uh, tribal and political engagement officer um, for those teams. We were in a town called Terenkaut, Uruzgan. Mm -hmm. um, which is actually close to where um, uh, Karzai and uh, some Green Berets went to take the country back. Um, so a lot of history there. Uh, Mullah Omar's house is pretty close to that area. Um, so it's, a, um, it's an area that's important to kind of keep. And uh, the Terencalt area will always have a, a, a deep spot in my heart and uh, the people there as well. Incredible place. Well, you know, Looking back on it now, Ed, what do you remember about that experience? What, what, um, when you think about your time in Afghanistan, I know you went through some rough times there. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, you know, not to sort of get into it, but as I understand, you know, your, your SEAL team commander, um, uh, Jonathan Price, I believe his name was. Joe uh, Price, correct. Right? He, commander he committed Price. suicide, the first time that's ever happened. So obviously, you know, tough times, but what, what do you most remember? What do you, when, when you think back on that period of time, uh, what's, what's the most searing memories that you have of, of that time period? You know, I, I remember unity um, during that time. I and mean, we live in a political environment where it seems like people are always at odds with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, around that time, actually before Job passed, we had a memorial service in country um, for three gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was a Roman Catholic Mm -hmm. Um, the other, a good fr a friend of mine that, that I had met on deployment, um, Cash Mamon was Muslim American. Um, the other one was a Jewish Navy SEAL. And, uh, we had a memorial service and watching, watching that and understanding that and seeing their names go up on a wall, just sent shutters down my spine about what this country really stands for. Right. I mean, you got three guys that just lost their lives and were willing to give their lives from three completely different religions. Mm -hmm. Right. And we care enough about each other to go over there and serve. And so, you know, when you when you come back and you see people at their at each other's throats over different issues, um, you know, it, it can be a bit disheartening. Right. Um, but it is it's amazing because when we all put on the uniform, you know, uh, where we're from, you know, who we are, all this stuff goes away. Right. 
and we got to really have each other's backs as men and women uh, and, and, and protect this country. Um, and so that, that moment um, uh, really stood, uh, you know, stood out for me. Um, the Taliban would have insider attacks um, to try to drive a wedge between us and our Taliban partner force. Mm-hmm. Um, Cash Mamone was one of those insider attacks. And so uh, we invited some of our Afghan partners to that memorial service and showed them that we were with them and that despite religion and differences, uh, we would fight and die together. And so it was just an amazing, amazing moment and just shows what this country is truly made of. Um, you can see a lot of negative going on, but it just uh, uh, a be- be- sad but beautiful moment of unity. Sure, sure. So you come back to the United States, uh, back to Miami, stick around here for a few more years. Um, did a lot of work with Special Operations Command South, with SOC South, sort of south of the border in Latin America. But then you head off to Dallas for some uh, new adventures and you start a new private equity firm called Coltala, right? Uh, tell us about the, what you're doing these days. Correct, correct. So, so Katala is a, uh, a, a purpose-driven um, holding company. Um, so it's a, it's a private equity model and, and a business skin. Um, uh, we try to build businesses of, of significance at Kultala and really through kind of mission and margin. Um, so we want to, you know, take, take care of our employees, uh, really grow incredible businesses and, um, and lead and transform uh, the industries. We have a, uh, a specific model we use. Um, there's a guy named Damon Baker who works with us, uh, who is a former Danaher uh, alum. Um, and we have a Tala Enterprise System that we work, which is a lean model, right? Um, comes from lean manufacturing. Right. So uh, the, the, the basic premise is people, plan, process, performance, mm-hmm. and how do you improve those? And so it's a, the, the word uh, that's used is the Japanese word Kaizen, mm-hmm. and it's continuous improvement. So as a human beings, we all want to get better at something every day as being a, a father, as being a, a person of faith, a business person, a community leader, or just a friend, right? Or, or a husband or wife. And so it's really um, uh, building something to have everyone improve each day. And you can see there's a servant leader mentality there, right? And being open for feedback, which we all are. Um, and so it's been beautiful to see um, as we work through the businesses, um, that subtle little bit improvement each day. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, kind of that servant leadership model as well from our the CEOs we work with and presidents. Ed, we're going to take a brief break. When I come back, I want yep. to talk a little bit more about that. I want to talk about the fact that you're a glutton for punishment because as you were starting this business, you were also kind of going to uh, MIT uh, uh, School of Business, right? So let's talk a little about that when we come back and also the whole issue of servant leadership. Thanks for sticking with, with us. We're going to take a brief commercial break. We'll be right back with Edward Crawford. As you age, the collagen that helps keep your body in optimal physical condition breaks down faster than your body can replace it. But now, it's easy to give your body the healthy dose of collagen it needs with Collagen Creamer from Longevity. It's a delicious vanilla-flavored coffee creamer that's packed with 7.5 grams of bovine-sourced collagen peptides. Longevity's Collagen Creamer uses two types of collagen to better supply the protein needed to repair and strengthen the connective tissue in your body. It also supports healthy hair, skin, nails, and even bones. We've also formulated Collagen Creamer with MCT, healthy fats that the body is able to absorb and convert into an instant boost of energy. Add it to coffee or one of your other favorite beverages when you need it. Longevity Collagen Creamer. Support for healthy connective tissue and more energy, all in a tasty vanilla-flavored creamer. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Antioxidants are essential to protect your cells against the damaging effects of free radicals. Pumeric by Longevity harnesses the power of nature to combat free radicals by delivering a potent boost of antioxidants known for their incredible healing properties. Sourced from certified organic turmeric root, Pumeric contains 95% curcuminoids, the active compounds that quash free radicals. Turmeric has been used in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine for thousands of years to promote both heart and brain health, as well as its powerful anti-inflammatory properties. 
We've also included a botanical blend of phytonutrients that include flavonoids, carotenoids, and sulfides. These natural, plant-based chemicals are powerful contributors to overall health and well-being. Pure Merrick, the organic antioxidant supplement from Longevity, formulated to promote optimal health. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Cardio Beats from Longevity supports a healthy cardiovascular system and helps supply the nutrients your body needs to support better physical endurance. Your capacity to last a little longer is largely based on how well your cardiovascular system expends oxygen and circulates blood through your body. Cardio Beats helps combat the oxidative stress caused by physical activity by supplying you with key nutrients that support your cardiovascular system. These nutrients have also been shown to help improve endurance. Cardio Beats starts with organic beets, a rich source of nitrates to support healthy blood flow and oxygen transport. We've added whole foods from highly bioavailable seaweed and mango fruit, both known for blood flow support and antioxidant-rich sweet cherries. Then, for even more heart health benefits, we finished it off with key amino acids. Take your physical endurance to the next level with Cardio Beats. Talk to your young Gemini associate for more information. We are ENTV USA. Log on now and check out our live shows and subscribe. You don't want to miss this. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Linea Deportiva, a sports line. At 7 p.m., O Que Chisme, the best celebrity gossip show with Odia Abreu. At 8 p.m., Punto Final, another angle of news. 9 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays, we have Alo Cortez with Tony Cortez. Tuesdays at 9 p.m., Dame Un Like. Thursdays, also at 9 p.m., De Noche Con Roche. Fridays, 9 p.m., Mas Con Mas with Raul Mascanosa. Every Wednesdays at 4 p.m., we've got Brisky Business with Dave Brisky. Followed by Inmigración en Fronteras with lawyer Irving Gonzalez at 5 p.m. This is our programming for ENTV USA from right here in Miami for the rest of the world. Con una vista. Basta. Show some love and give us a like. Just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you have to look it or feel it. Immortalium by Longevity was developed to support your body's ability to age normally and healthfully. It's an advanced anti-aging supplement that combines the most effective essential nutrients in a cutting-edge, bi-layered and extended release tablet designed to support your telomere health and natural aging process. Telomeres are the biological clocks within your cells that form the protective ends of almost every chromosome in your body. Telomeres help prevent the chromosomes from deteriorating. The longer and healthier the telomeres in a cell, the greater the health and anti-aging benefits. Immortalium contains synergizing antioxidant enzymes and telomere health-promoting nutrients that are quickly absorbed to give your body time to break down the antioxidants and put them to work. Immortalium, advanced anti-aging support that can help fight the natural aging process. To learn more, contact your longevity associate. As you age, factors like health, weight, diet, and lifestyle can all impact your bones, joints, and general mobility. Over time, you might start to experience stiffness or pain due to damaged joints or connective tissue. Ultima Glucogel by Longevity was created to help you limit the effects of wear on your joints. It delivers a daily dose of collagen-rich gelatin your body needs for joint elasticity and maintenance. Ultima Glucogel contains a one-to-one -one ratio of gelatin and glucosamine sulfate, which is a key building block of your bone matrix, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and connective tissue. Gelatin's unique blend of amino acids not only help with muscle and joint health, but also has been shown to provide additional benefits for the brain, skin, and hair. Ultimate Glucogel, natural, optimal daily support for joint health. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Super Greens is a one-of-a-kind blend that's loaded with hard-to-find nutrient-dense superfoods. We've used what we've learned from our more than 20 years working with mineral-based nutrition to create one of the healthiest, plant-based nutritional products available. Each superfood was carefully selected so that it complements and enhances the others, helping to maximize Supergreen's nutritional power. 
Next, we added a specialized fermentation technique to increase the bioavailability of each superfood. Finally, we put in powerful probiotics and enzymes for added digestive support to give you jam-packed nutritional support. Longevity Super Greens, the highly alkalinizing super supplement that helps balance your body. It's the superfood-powered way to get more organic fruits and veggies in your day, all in just one scoop. Check with your Longevity distributor to learn more. Paying attention to your overall health also means focusing on the command center of it all, your brain. Factors like stress, lack of sleep, poor diet, a sedentary lifestyle, and the bombardment of pollutants and toxins can all diminish brain and neural functions. When was the last time you concentrated on your brain health? Synaptive by Longevity is a cutting-edge, unique brain support supplement that delivers powerful nutrients both immediately and throughout the day. Its anti-stress nutrients provide instant brain-boosting support that helps with mental focus and cognitive activity. To enhance your body's neuroprotection, Synaptive's full-spectrum antioxidant blend targets six major classes of free radicals that inhibit brain function. This powerful nutrient combination also promotes healthy blood flow to the brain. Synaptive, optimal antioxidant neuroprotection and support for a healthy brain. Now that's something to think about. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. The best way to prevent the sickness is to avoid exposure and to avoid exposing other people. Maintain a distance of six feet whenever possible and cover your nose and mouth with a handkerchief or mask when in public. Avoid hugs, handshakes, and big reunions as well as events indoors. For more information, please go to floridahealthcovid19.gov. This is a message from ENTV USA for the community. Welcome back to Moscow Moss. I'm talking to Edward Crawford in Dallas, Texas. Edward's a dear friend. I've known him for many years. Uh, individual with a very diverse background, originally from Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, spent some time here in Miami, spent some time in Afghanistan, uh, and is now in Dallas, Texas, uh, with a new enterprise that he has uh, co-founded called Koltala Holdings. It's a private equity firm. And right before the break, we were talking about uh, the business. What is your target companies, uh, Ed? Tell us a little about your, the target companies that you uh, look to acquire. Yeah, we, we look through three different industries. One is essential services. So you can think of essential services. We're an HVAC uh, service business right now. So you right. think of an HVAC service, uh, roof services, um, pool services, home services, um, and uh, you know elevator management, those type of services. But things that you have to have that are essential. And um, the other is, is home health. We are in a home health business now uh, that's really taking care of the elderly post-acute mm -hmm. um, and also hospice, um, which is taking care of people in one of their, in the most important phase of their life, the last part of their life. Right? right. And so that hospice nurse sometimes is their, their best friend or caretaker in their final days. So really a neat kind of passion driven business as well. That's in the home health side of things. And then on the manufacturing businesses, we look more broadly but focus on test and measurement and industrial automation on the manufacturing side. Uh, so that's kind of where we focus and we're looking for five to $10 million EBITDA businesses generally mm -hmm. with owners who are looking to recap and grow or potentially sell their business and have someone else run it. Our uh, Kultala means Colt, which is a four year old uh, horse running at the fastest part of its prime and ala which uh, as you know uh, Raul, right. is spanish and latin for a uh, wing or wing like structure right so we look for for great horses to back um and help lift them up and um and try to help them take flight in the business Fantastic. now you're based in dallas but you're you're not necessarily limited to to the texas market is that correct 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 we have offices in fort worth in dallas um but we uh we can look at we were in Alabama the other day looking at an opportunity. We tend to focus on Texas and the, and the southern states sure. or contiguous states, but we look at opportunities broadly. Terrific. Um, now, let me ask you, so, so you started this business a few years ago, and I tell people that, you know, you must be like a real glutton for punishment because you decided to sort of set up this operation 
while you were also going to MIT uh, and their school of business. I mean, mm -hmm. how did you manage to pull that off, Ed? I mean, that must have been an incredibly stressful time. How Mary Elizabeth sort of, you know, puts up with you, I sometimes wonder, but I mean, that must have been another big challenge. No, it really was. It really was. And I have to hand it, you know, my, my, uh, my partner, Ralph Manning, is an incredible human being. And we have such a great partnership and trust. And we really enjoy what we do. Um, and he was uh, doing the OPM program at, at Harvard at the time. And in, in 2015, we started talking. He actually approached me and said, hey, I'm thinking about this idea. And I said, that sounds super exciting. And so we kind of worked on and iterated with it. And he worked through his program. And then as I was in the program, I thought about it, you know, as well with him. And so it all kind of came together. We ended up, we were actually officing in the same office in two different businesses. Um, and so uh, at one point we, we both kind of looked at each other and said, we, we kind of got to quit our jobs and do this. <laughs> um, and uh, we, Ralph and I both call it burning the boats. And so right. we had to burn the boats. <laughs> right, got to burn the boats, um, absolutely. But it's, 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 a stressful, uh, it's a stressful experience being an entrepreneur or starting anything new like that, especially with a family. Um, but when you have someone that you truly trust mm -hmm. uh, and you know has grit and Ralph has grit and spades, right? right. He's a, he's grew up riding horses. He's from Fort Worth. And uh, so when you have someone you trust like that, you know, you're going to work and do everything it takes. Um, then you just kind of know it's the right moment. So, so, but I mean, yours is a startup and then all of a sudden you got whacked this year with COVID-19. I mean, how did that affect your business? Yeah. So on the HVAC side, um, it hurt, it, you know, certain people don't want you in their homes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there was a lot of, you know, you have to uh, buy a lot of PPE, face masks and that sort of thing. The booties, you have to have a new protocol. Um, we had to have, um, you know, see who has COVID and who doesn't and communicate with our clientele. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we did have some people that had COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also developing scripts when somebody says we don't want you in your home and you say, well, this is how we would this is how we would do it and make that help them feel safe. Um, so. HVAC is an essential service and with a lot of people in their homes with all their kids and it gets hot in Dallas, and right. <laughs> BMW in the, in the summer, um, we, 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 we were able to, to have a decent summer. Um, but, uh, but it did, it did affect our business. We were just very lucky and blessed, um, that we were in that segment and not restaurant industry or some of the others sure. hotel where I, Feel terrible that people have really suffered. So. Yeah, I mean, th those guys have taken it on the chin, man, especially in some mm -hmm. of the big urban centers. I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, uh, uh, talking to friends in New York, I don't know how that city is going to come back. I mean, so much of the uh, the businesses have been shuttered and people are now working yeah. from home. I don't know to what ex extent those uh, corporations are going to return to Manhattan. And all the restaurants that support those uh, businesses are, 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 and a lot of them are still shut down. There's, you know, it's, it's not, very tough. You know, My brother lives in Manhattan and, and they've get, you know, as you know, New York has a, a lot of grit and soul sure. and, you know, after 9-11. And so they're ready to battle back, but it is very tough. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I mean, think about this. I mean, New York has never really been known for outdoor dining, especially in the summer. I mean, uh, anybody who's been in New York in the summertime will tell you that it's a pretty miserable experience. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, so they open them up for outdoor dining. But, I mean, again, how many people in New York are sort of used to, you know, uh, during the summer months, you know, uh, eating outdoors and, and um, it's tough. I don't know, it's I, tough, I fear, really. for, I fear for, for, for the city. Um Pivoting a little bit towards politics and your experience, you know, as a Navy Intel officer, um, uh, you know, serving our country, uh, you you've always kind of been involved in politics. Uh, uh, you know, I know you've got some close ties to the Bush family and been involved in some fundraising uh, efforts, you know, with them over the years. But more recently, you decided to set up something called the War Veterans Fund with a gentleman named Dan Green, correct? Correct. Correct. And tell us about the War Veterans Fund, what the uh, uh, the idea was there, uh, what you've been doing with it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. No, great. Well, uh, you know, a friend of mine, close friend, uh, we thought about kind of what was pure. He, we served together um, and both um, are passionate about politics um, and, and more so just the country. Right. Uh, making sure the right people are in the right seats. And um, with a lot of the back and forth uh, between the two parties, um, we said, Hey, you know, what's something pure we could do. And we said, you know, if, if somebody's willing to die for their country, uh, then they're, they're, they're higher character. What if we vetted a lot of military veterans, uh, got to know them and tried to find some that might not be successful unless they got a lot of help. So maybe, maybe not as connected or didn't have the money, um, or a first time candidate, right? right. Um, kind of venture investing for, um, for candidates. And, uh, and, and we, 
formed form this group and it's been it's been amazing to see the camaraderie and the communication between all of them uh many people know of uh, a few of our candidates we have uh mike waltz in florida who's a sure. green beret incredible human being sure. uh, in your very own florida um we have dan crenshaw here in texas who we helped those were two of our initial candidates that we 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 helped um, and great to see what they're doing and they support war veterans fund uh, now we've got uh, currently August Fluger in Texas and a host of other candidates. Um, Tony Gonzalez is a Hispanic candidate, uh, Navy Master Chief in Iraq and Afghanistan, sure. uh, PhD sure. candidate now, right. um, and uh, is that a huge territory uh, near the border of Mexico? Um, so we just got you know we've got some really uh, uh, Mike Garcia, California, uh, Jesse Jensen in Washington. We've got some incredible human beings, um, including a Navy nurse. Uh, Lynn Blankenbecker. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been a really neat, uh, neat organization to support. Yep. Um, and we feel really confident that, you know, every cycle we get two or three really strong candidates in, you'll start uh, seeing the change in Congress um, and more honor, courage and commitment in Congress. Absolutely. Honor, courage, commitment. Those are the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the motto, basically, of the United States Navy, if I'm not mistaken. The Navy. Correct? Yep. Honor, courage, commitment. Um, tell us how, how do you view the economy, Ed? What, what do you see, um, you know, obviously the stock market's been performing, you know, exceptionally well, right? I mean, I, I tell people that, uh, that may not be interested in the market, that it's important to sort of look at what's happened in the financial markets because financial markets are really sort of forward-looking mechanism because stock prices are based on, on future earnings, right? So to the extent that, you know, whether you think you're involved in the, in the market or not, you really are because we've got so many pension funds and and uh, retirement funds involved in the market. Um, so you know the ordinary Joe may not really care much about the market, but it does give us an idea of you know where the economy is headed. And and by all accounts, if you believe that the markets are rational and that they are in fact forward looking, you would think that the outlook looks pretty rosy for America, at least from the standpoint of of rational financial investors. Do you share that opinion? Yeah, I think uh, there, there's unfortunately it's kind of becoming more two two Americas, right? So you have a lot of um, a lot of people with white collar jobs or, or um, knowledge economy jobs can be on their laptops, work from a coffee shop, and that sort of thing. I think a lot of um, people that are serving in restaurants, as you know, or hotels, have really right. so it's really it's really sector specific, um, and hopeful that as the economy is opening up and these you know, I'm starting to see people at restaurants. I don't know how it is in Miami, um, but we're, we're seeing a lot of people back at restaurants here in, in Dallas, Fort Worth. Right. Um, uh, hotels, a little bit different story, but uh, I traveled the other day and starting to see more people travel. And so hopeful that there is an uptick and um, and as the PPP loans give out, right. And there isn't more of it um, that there's an uptick in actual commerce that is going on. Um, so a lot of businesses have been shuttered, and I think it's uh, tough medicine and difficult for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think there is a silver lining at the end of this um, if we can if we can get it right. Do you think this signals a, a permanent change in the way Americans view uh, working in an office environment? Or, are, are we headed in a new direction in terms of you know this work from home mentality? I mean, uh, what, what do you think about that? I do. Listen, we 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 have a accounting firm that we work with, and they're not going back until next year. Um, uh, investment banks, a lot, a lot of the, the knowledge economy or remote workers, right? People that have been going to an office and commuting an hour and a half every day and realizing that they can do their same job and not do that right. are, are working from home, right? And they're used to it and they like it. And employers are saying, okay, is there a productivity trade-off? Some employee, some businesses are finding it's more productive. Um, there's not as much commute time. People are happier. Sure. Um, others are saying, where's that team dynamic? Right. I just uh, did a post on this uh, two days ago, um, but really it's in it's the trade off of where do you get that camaraderie? You know, my, my partner and I, we every Monday we're all in the office together and it, it really means a lot to be in the office together, and work together to see each other. Right? right. But we do a lot of work remote. And we're fairly adept at that as well. So it's really trying to find that bad, that uh, balance of culture, teamwork. Right. But also being remote and maybe working from home and then saying, I'm going to step into dinner with my family when I get off work at 630. Right. And it takes me 30 second transition to start that family dinner. Right. So, Ed, uh, we're sort of running out of time, but I want to sort of finish off with something that I know is near and dear to your heart. Talk to us about servant leadership, what that means to you, the, the whole concept of servant leadership um, and how your faith uh, experience uh, uh, 
meshes very nicely with that whole concept of servant leadership. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, a lot of the the leaders that I most admire and respect are people that have served, have, have led through serving others. Um, and I think our our uh, my main man Jesus Christos is a great example of that. Um, <laughs> Uh, but there have been there are many others, right? Uh, and, and how I kind of think about uh, servant leadership is is trying to put others before yourself and build up a team and not always making it about you. Something we all struggle with because we all have pride and ego, and, and I definitely struggle with it myself all the time. Um, but really, uh, trying to be there for others and and give before you get. Right. Um, it's a great way to live. I think it's the right way to live. Um, and I, I did a TED talk recently about Cheryl Bachelder, who ran Popeyes, um, and really showing how she turned around that organization um, through servant leadership. Another great example is the CEO of Shivani Yogurt, right? Ten sure, percent sure, of, of his ownership yeah. is with his employees, and thirty-five percent of his business is with immigrants. That English is their second language, right? So he tried to give back to a an, an old factory in old, upstate New York that was going to be shuttered, and fifty guys were going to get fired. And he's hired almost all of them back and built this business and made it about them and made them feel a part of it. Um, and so I feel that servant leadership is something, whether it's Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, you know, Martin Luther King or business leaders, is something that really can generate a, a profit and, and help people both mission and margin, right. um, but also, you know, creates a better environment for people just to live. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I think about servant leadership. And I'm always trying to to be a better servant to, to others. Excellent. Ed, thank you for your servant leadership. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule to talk to us today. I think people will have enjoyed this uh, conversation that we just had. Uh, Ed, uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. I see great things in your future. You know, I'm a big fan. I always have been. And uh, say hello to your lovely wife and your kids and uh, take good care of them. And, and I do appreciate well, it, Roel. You're, you're, doing you're, you're well. a great, you're a great mentor. Well. And thank you for all that you've done for our country, too. I admire and respect everything that you do and look up to you a tremendous amount, Roel. Thank, thank you so you, much. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes. We're going to take a, a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back to review the events of the week. Stick with us. Take care. Your body's immune system is under constant pressure from things like stress and toxins in the environment. It's crucial to be proactive and support your immune system. Introducing Fast-Acting Zinc Plus Immune Support by Longevity. Unlike zinc-only supplements, Zinc Plus Immune Support builds on the proven power of zinc and adds complementary nutrients, while our proprietary blend of natural fruit and root extracts provides the extra help your immune system needs to work against daily stressors. And we've included Longevity's exclusive plant-derived minerals to give your body the minerals it needs but can't get from food alone. And because Zinc Plus Immune Support is delivered in a great-tasting, sugar-free, berry-flavored lozenge, it encourages quicker absorption of all these nutrients into your body. Zinc Plus Immune Support. Zinc plus the extra support your body needs to promote a healthy immune system. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Supergreens is a one-of-a-kind blend that's loaded with hard-to-find nutrient-dense superfoods. We've used what we've learned from our more than 20 years working with mineral-based nutrition to create one of the healthiest plant-based nutritional products available. Each superfood was carefully selected so that it complements and enhances the others, helping to maximize Supergreens nutritional power. Next, we added a specialized fermentation technique to increase the bioavailability of each superfood. Finally, we put in powerful probiotics and enzymes for added digestive support to give you jam-packed nutritional support. Longevity Supergreens, the highly alkalinizing super supplement that helps balance your body. It's the superfood-powered way to get more organic fruits and veggies in your day, all in just one scoop. Check with your Longevity distributor to learn more. Paying attention to your overall health also means focusing on the command center of it all, your brain. 
Factors like stress, lack of sleep, poor diet, a sedentary lifestyle, and the bombardment of pollutants and toxins can all diminish brain and neural functions. When was the last time you concentrated on your brain health? Synaptive by Longevity is a cutting-edge, unique brain support supplement that delivers powerful nutrients both immediately and throughout the day. Its anti-stress nutrients provide instant brain-boosting support that helps with mental focus and cognitive activity. To enhance your body's neuroprotection, Synaptive's full-spectrum antioxidant blend targets six major classes of free radicals that inhibit brain function. This powerful nutrient combination also promotes healthy blood flow to the brain. Synaptive, optimal antioxidant neuroprotection and support for a healthy brain. Now that's something to think about. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. We are ENTV USA. You can find us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Roku. You can also download our mobile applications either from Google Play or from the Apple Store, depending on your online device. Give us a shot. You'll like what you see. Con una vista, basta. Antioxidants are essential to protect your cells against the damaging effects of free radicals. Pyrmeric by Longevity harnesses the power of nature to combat free radicals by delivering a potent boost of antioxidants known for their incredible healing properties. Sourced from certified organic turmeric root, Pyrmeric contains 95% curcuminoids, the active compounds that quash free radicals. Turmeric has been used in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine for thousands of years to promote both heart and brain health, as well as its powerful anti-inflammatory properties. We've also included a botanical blend of phytonutrients that include flavonoids, carotenoids, and sulfides. These natural, plant-based chemicals are powerful contributors to overall health and well-being. Pyrmeric, the organic antioxidant supplement from Longevity, formulated to promote optimal health. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Understanding your microbiome can change everything you thought you knew about nutrition, digestion, immunity, and metabolism. Ultimate Microbiome by Longevity was specifically formulated to optimize this ecosystem. It provides the advanced support your gut needs through prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplementation. Our unique blend of probiotics includes lactobacillus and plantarum, healthy bacteria, which has been shown to aid in weight loss, sleep, mood, and may even help with seasonal allergies. To enhance digestion, Digizyme Multi-Enzyme Complex, a blend of five specific enzymes, has been added to Ultimate Microbiome. It can help break down food so your body can better absorb nutrients. Ultimate Microbiome, the scientific, proprietary, and holistic approach to gut health that helps optimize your body's entire gut ecosystem. Forced collagen peptides. Longevity's Collagen Creamer uses two types of collagen to better supply the protein needed to repair and strengthen the connective tissue in your body. It also supports healthy hair, skin, nails, and even bones. We've also formulated Collagen Creamer with MCT, healthy fats that the body is able to absorb and convert into an instant boost of energy. Add it to coffee or one of your other favorite beverages when you need it. Longevity Collagen Creamer, support for healthy connective tissue and more energy, all in a tasty vanilla-flavored creamer. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you have to look it or feel it. Immortalium by Longevity was developed to support your body's ability to age normally and healthfully. It's an advanced anti-aging supplement that combines the most effective essential nutrients in a cutting-edge, bi-layered and extended release tablet designed to support your telomere health and natural aging process. Telomeres are the biological clocks within your cells that form the protective ends of almost every chromosome in your body. Telomeres help prevent the chromosomes from deteriorating. The longer and healthier the telomeres in a cell, the greater the health and anti-aging benefits. Immortalium contains synergizing antioxidant enzymes and telomere health-promoting nutrients that are quickly absorbed to give your body time to break down the antioxidants and put them to work. Immortalium, advanced anti-aging support that can help fight the natural aging process. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. As you age, factors like health, weight, diet, and lifestyle can all impact your bones, joints, and general mobility. 
Over time, you might start to experience stiffness or pain due to damaged joints or connective tissue. Ultimate Glucogel by Longevity was created to help you limit the effects of wear on your joints. It delivers a daily dose of collagen-rich gelatin your body needs for joint elasticity and maintenance. Ultimate Glucogel contains a 1 to 1 ratio of gelatin and glucosamine sulfate, which is a key building block of your bone matrix, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and connective tissue. Gelatin's unique blend of amino acids not only help with muscle and joint health, but also has been shown to provide additional benefits for the brain, skin, and hair. Ultimate Glucogel Natural, optimal daily support for joint health. To learn more, Contact your Longevity associate. Welcome back to Moscow Moss. Thank you for sticking with us. With us. Um, last week, I did not have an opportunity to talk about uh, September 11th, uh, the, the 19th anniversary of that uh, horrific day in American history. Um, we had taped that program a little bit earlier than usual uh, because of the fact that uh, um, you know, I had some, some medical issues I needed to address uh, last Friday. Uh, didn't really have an opportunity to talk about 9-11, but I didn't want the month to go by without talking about my own personal experiences on September 11th and, and how important I think it is for us not to forget what happened on that day. Um, September 11th is particularly um, important to me uh, because I lost two friends in the World Trade Center. Um, I didn't realize it at the time. Like a lot of Americans that day, I was driving into work uh, just pulling into my uh, garage at, uh, at work, uh, hearing over the radio that an airplane had struck the World Trade Center. Um, I spent an early a great part of my early career in banking living in Manhattan. And the first time around, uh, I lived in Greenwich Village and actually commuted to uh, the Wall Street area, stopping uh, in the World Trade Center. I would take the double R train into the World Trade Center and then walking through the World Trade, World Trade Center on my way to uh, uh, my, my employer, Chase Manhattan Bank on Wall Street. Second time I lived in New York, I was actually working for Goldman Sachs and uh, lived literally in the, uh, in the shadows of the World Trade Center there in, uh, in, in lower Manhattan, Battery Park City, as they call it. So for me, it was sort of a surreal experience on September 11th uh, you know, hearing that, that a, a, a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, how, how strange. I mean, uh, uh, you know, decades earlier, uh, you know, there had been an incident in New York where a, a small airplane had crashed into the Empire State Building. Uh, but that was, you know, that was, I think, in the 40s or 50s, something like that happened. And it just seemed incredibly strange to me that a plane would crash into the World Trade Center and as I, you know, rode up the elevator, I was thinking to myself, man, I mean, this is, this is just bizarre. Um, and as I got to my office, we turned on the TV, we saw what was happening, uh, and then saw that second plane crash into the World Trade Center. And it became pretty obvious to me right away, like I think a lot of Americans, that this was no longer an, an accident, that this was an attack on America. And uh, at the time, I was working for American Express Bank, um, and a lot of us were, were sort of sitting around watching these images uh, of what was going on at the World Trade Center. Uh, American Express had its corporate headquarters literally uh, within spitting distance of the World Trade Center. So we were very concerned about our colleagues in New York, what would happen to them, what was going on. Uh, just an, an enormous amount of anxiety uh, taking place at that time. And I remember watching what was going on on the screen and immediately sort of realizing that there was really only one person uh, that, that could have done this. Uh, and, and I mentioned to my colleagues that I thought that was the work of Osama bin Laden. And most of them had no idea who I was talking about. I mean, you know, Osama bin Laden was not a common name back then. But, you know, I realized that something that extreme, something that uh, horrific, 
uh, could only come from the mind of uh, Osama bin Laden. I mean, uh, back then we still had, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Palestinian Liberation Organization um, uh, very active. But I knew that, you know, that, uh, uh, that it was highly unlikely that they had done something like that. Uh, they simply were, were, were not that foolish. Um, and, and sure enough, I mean, uh, I, I, I hate to be right about that, but I mean, I sort of realized, uh, you know, shortly thereafter and the weeks ahead, that in fact, uh, that was something from the, master, from the, from the mind of uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, but I, at the time, I had no idea that I had a, a, a connection, a personal connection to uh, uh, that horrific event. And it was only later on that I learned that I had lost two friends in the World Trade Center. A young man named Jimmy uh, Connor, James Connor, a uh, young sort of scrappy Irish-American bond trader who worked for a company called uh, Sandler O'Neill. Sandler O'Neill was a startup investment bank uh, in the financial uh, district of uh, Manhattan, uh, headed by a gentleman named Herman Sandler that I had also become very close to. Herman Sandler uh, was much different. You know, Jimmy Connor was in his early 30s, Irish-American, scrappy, you know, young man. Herman Sandler being one of the founders of the firm. Uh, if you guys have ever seen um, that uh, Broadway musical, Annie, uh, Herman Sandler was the spitting image of Daddy Warbucks. Big, tall guy, bald head, big chested guy, uh, you know, very outspoken, very gregarious. Uh, that was Herman Sandler. Um, typical sort of New York, Wall Street culture, hard charging, uh, building his own investment bank, uh, wanting to do business right and left. And Jimmy Connor was one of his protégés, you know, out there, uh, you know, uh, looking for clients and, and, and building the business. And I developed a very good relationship with them. I spoke to Jimmy on, on, on almost a daily basis for, for several years, uh, buying and selling bonds, you know, with, with Jimmy Connor back then. Uh, Herman Sandler would come down to visit us in Miami, the firm that I was working with at the time. And, uh, you know, we'd have some, some great times together, dinner and talking business and, and life in general. Um, and when I got the news that, that both of them had been killed, and in fact, Almost the entire firm had been wiped out, the entire firm of Sandler O'Neill. Um, they only had a few people that, that survived that day, but through a lot of grit, a lot of stamina, those survivors, with the help of other firms on Wall Street, were able to recreate their business and get started again and, and build it into a, a powerhouse firm uh, that I think was actually sold a year or two ago to another big outfit, uh, but incredibly successful. Uh, CEO uh, uh, James Dunn, I believe his name is, uh, survived and, and he rebuilt that. Uh, but it just goes to show the, the, the stamina, uh, that, that the grit of, of the American individual, the American enterprise, that, that we could take a blow like that. 3,000 people killed at the World Trade Center. You know, hundreds of others killed in those horrific uh, uh, airplane crashes. Uh, people killed at the, at the Pentagon. Um, through that tragedy, we were able to come together as a country and move forward and confront the very real threat of terrorism in the world. And I think we have prosecuted those wars successfully such that, you know, we now really don't have to worry about, um, you know, those kinds of attacks happening anytime soon in America. Always vigilant, but we have eliminated that threat for the time being uh, and still remain vigilant for, for any other threats that may appear. And it just goes to show what we as a country can do when we're united. Very different from what we're experiencing today in America. Uh, I hope that we remember the, 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 that message from 9-11, that we really uh, can do great things when we, when we work together as a country uh, to, to move our agenda forward. Um, we have eliminated uh, Osama bin Laden. We've eliminated that threat. Uh, President Trump recently eliminated Qasem Soleimani, who's probably one of the other terrorist masterminds of the world who's been at war with the United States for, for decades. Um, so, you know, we've had some incredible successes, uh, you know, in terms of, of tamping down that threat against America. Again, we need to remain vigilant, but we can do great things when we're together. Contrast that to what's going on in America now. You know, we seem to be incredibly divided, you know, both extremes, the Republicans and Democrats. Um, we need to find a way to get through all of that uh, clutter 
And, and uh, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror and I blame myself because obviously I'm a very opinionated person. I make no bones about the fact that I'm a conservative, that I'm right wing, that this is how I feel, this is how I view the universe. Um, but I will tell you one thing. I am not at all in favor of this cancel culture that seems to be part of the left wing of America now, which means that we cannot have these conversations freely, that if you are have an adverse opinion to what I have, that, that I should somehow be canceled for my opinions because only your opinion matters. That is a horrific way to look at our country. That is a horrific way to, do, to, to look at, at the principles that our founding fathers established. Our founding fathers, one of the core principles was that of free speech. And the most protected free speech is that which is offensive free speech. So whether it's Raul Moss talking about his right-wing views or somebody else talking about their left-wing views, we all should be civil enough to listen to all those conversations and try and find where we can compromise, where we can meet in the middle. But the idea that we should shut down one part of the conversation and, 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 and only listen to the other is absolutely absurd. Uh, we need to sort of focus, uh, again, on what brings us together, but in that environment where everybody's opinion matters, right wing, left wing, center, moderate, extreme, whatever. Um, you know, the, the social media has now become the public square for America. Whether we like it or not, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, that is where we express ourselves as a people these days. And I think we need to be very vigilant that those organizations, which are massive, and in some cases they're either monopolies or, or participating in, uh, as an oligopoly with just a few major players in that space, we need to make sure that space remains free, that people can express themselves. And quite frankly, I'm of the opinion that if those organizations start to suppress that free speech, that the government needs to intervene and break them up. Uh, we've done that before with enterprises in America, where you know they, they had that monopolistic environment or that uh, oligopolistic environment, um, and we created uh, much smaller entities so that they would compete more freely amongst themselves and not have such concentrated power. So I'm very strongly of the opinion that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those big social media enterprises need to remain open and people should be able to express themselves freely. I hope you agree with me. I hope you will see fit to uh, express your own opinions freely, just like, as I do on this program. Uh, and remember, at the end of the day, we're all Americans. We're not you know, red Republicans or blue Democrats. We are all Americans first and foremost. Keep that in mind. Keep watching this program. You may not always like what I have to say, but I will always tell you exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, keep America strong. Don't let 9-11 happen again. We're out of time. My little timer's telling me so. We'll see you again next week on Moscow Mas here on ENTV USA from Cachita Universal Studios in Miami, Florida. Thank you for being with us. See you again soon. Take care.